Now we're going to be playing our uh, feature interview on the Christmas Lounge. We've been speaking to thought reader Drew McAdam about uh, his... Um his fantastic thought reading skills he was on uh, Trisha Goddard as uh, the interrogator for a while and of course he's been involved in uh, military intelligence and the fire service for about three decades and um, and do you know what the best people uh, to speak to uh, the best people to deal with that is Ricky and Carly because they were leading the interview so uh, over to you Carly well, yes, we'd like to give the biggest and warmest welcome to Radio S5. It's a pleasure to be joined for our Christmas special by the mentalist, TV and radio's Drew McAdam. Yes, good, good evening, Drew. Hello, good Lovely evening to, to have you. you here. Yes, thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah, and normally when you uh, start an interview, you've got a very special guest and you, you, you tend to want to find out, you know, catch up with them, what they've been up to. But really, it's more about what you've not been up to, because you're just so busy all the time. It's a very packed life that I have. It's uh, wonderful. Fantastic. Been all around the world um, doing shows, and in the UK as well, mainly doing corporate shows. And sure. uh, had a couple of theatre shows as well, lots of television work, lots of radio work, and now I am here at Radio West 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, can you tell us a wee bit more about when you were over, because obviously this uh, theatre that you were in, Rasputin was murdered there, I believe. Yes, that right? that's right. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, historically, it's fascinating anyway, um, because of the Rasputin link. But it's a palace which is is everything is gilt, everything's gold, gorgeous, uh, and it's absolutely spectacular. And they have their own private theatre there, a, a, a three-story theatre. Um, and I, I was on there, just a wonderful, probably one of the best gigs I've ever had. You know, to be to be in Russia and doing it there. Never forget it. It's going to live with me for a long time. I can tell you. Now you were on about a bit. You you know you had acts on before you. You were actually the, the last act on. Yes, yes. So what was going on there? What was happening? Who were the the well, first two acts? The idea was I had to close the show, um, which is which is a great honour. You know, when you close the show. Absolutely. But I had to follow the first act, which was proper Russian ballet dancing. Super. And then the second one was Cossack dancing, <laughs> and then they had me. <laughs> and that's how you came on. Is that how you that actually was, began the show? Well, no, Your I, version I, of I did a little dance. ballet dance on. Yeah, that, that was just just for the fun of it. I can just imagine you in a leotard. <laughs> <laughs> can you really? Oh come on, it's Christmas. We're meant to be thinking about turkey and not men in leotards. No, let, let's, oh, let's just not go there. there. Let's Sorry just not go there. Yes. <laughs> now the Russian factor. I actually did Russian at school. Um, did you learn any of the lingo when you were over? Neat. Neat. Thank you. Can't that, say um, that privyet. You said privyet. Hello. Privyet. Privyet. Thought it was stress, would you? Well, privyet was what they taught me. Was I swearing in Russian? Well, that's what you never know. Спасибо. <laughs> 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 Well, yes, please, well, if we yes. get any emails from <laughs> Moscow that, that are saying that you're swearing in Russian, then at least we know. Somebody's, yeah, somebody's given me the wrong words. Okay. <laughs> Indeed, also, I mean, we, we're doing a, the, the theme of, uh, you know, if anybody has any relatives abroad and things at Christmas. And um, Did you make friends over there or were you just over for the gig and then right back out it again? It was over there. I was there for eight days and I, I certainly met some people and... and um, became quite friendly with them but because I don't speak Russian and very few of them speak English, English it's yeah. very difficult. It's up a but, barrier. But mentalism, mind reading, spoon bending, it's an international language, the stuff mm. that I do. You, you know, don't if you need say to it, speak the same don't, language. No, exactly, though. exactly, because it's almost like a, a language of the mind, I suppose, uh -huh. rather than anything sure, yeah. else. And also, um, recently you were off doing a, a gig in Edinburgh at the, the Usher Hall. No, is it, that the children's? Yeah, that wasn't doing the gig. That was an invitation. You were invited, yeah. yes. So I, yeah. so I go yeah. along. I do. Um, I, it's quite nice. I get a lot of, of invites along to these kind of things, and it's wonderful because because of what I do, um, I, I suppose I'm not a threat to people, um, and so as a result of that, I've met nearly all my boyhood heroes. You know, everybody from Alice Cooper to. to Steve Harley, Cockney Rebel, and we've become good friends with these, which is remarkable. How wonderful, you know, isn't it? really it? is. Mm. And to find that your heroes are actually really nice guys. Um, and like I said, there was one I was doing, you know how I do spoon bending. Yes. Then across Uri Geller now. Oh. We, we go back almost almost 25 years is now. Is it that long? Yeah. I didn't really? realise it was and that And of course, far, my hometown of North Berwick, um, he's bought an island there, so when he went down to visit it, um, and you can see this on YouTube, he ended up getting me up to do the spoon bending rather than him. So my mother's in the audience, some of my 
uh, old school teachers are in the audience and Uri and introduced yeah. me, brought me up and got me to do the spoon bending. But perhaps the one that really sticks out in my mind would be at Stirling, when I was at Stirling Castle. And I was doing some spoon bending for an elderly American gentleman. And halfway through, I realised it was Buzz Aldrin. Oh, yes. Who walked mm. on the moon. Mm. <laughs> I, <see. laughs> I mean, what other job are you, are you liable to? Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm the luckiest person alive, I'm convinced of it. And, sure. you, and you've had a lot of uh, celebrity te testimonies uh, apart from Buzz Aldrin and Yuri Geller, haven't yes, you? Yes, oh yeah, yeah, that's, um, yes. Uh, it's, sometimes when they have the birthday parties, for example, mm -hmm. they want something different, so they'll, mm -hmm. they'll bring me in. So there have been loads of uh, celebs mm -hmm. think think that what I do is... And it's not me that like it's what I do that... Yeah. Like, because it's I think everybody likes it, to, to see actual mind reading up close yeah. rather than... When you're seeing it on television, you think, well, it's a stooge, or, you know, that it's been set up in advance. Or, or, you, know, yeah. you begin to question that. it. Of course, yeah. you, mm -hmm. of course you do. Um, and it's not until you actually, it's something you have to see personally. Yourself. Yeah. And, and hopefully, you know, we'll try a couple of experiments here today. Uh -huh. And of course, the listeners, though, will just have to accept that we genuinely have not set anything up. And just to make this clear, I offer £20,000 to anybody who can prove that, that I set anything up in advance. Mm -hmm. That we've come to some arrangement. Of How long have we got to work on this? Yeah. Oh, Twenty thousand pounds. But I'm going to be doing it with you. <laughs> so they'll Definitely. all be asking you. <laughs> yeah. So, but you, you know, you're going to do a, a you demonstrate um, mm -hmm. with uh, Matthew, and obviously you're going to do something with myself. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll which do a uh, of is also fascinating. So we're all uh, really looking forward to that. But on the note of uh, Yuri mm -hmm. and his island. When you said to me, oh, you know, we need to get something set up, something, you know, really nice to do for yourself, your wife, and, you know, when we're going away. Um, now, I had actually read that he believes that the there was an Egyptian princess. Arrived. On Lam Island. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. So, obviously, at a later date. So, for the listeners, we just never know what might happen futuristically. It's, um, well, I mean, he, he spent the night on the island and left some some bits and pieces out there and there are some strange connections and oddly enough I took him to um, Rosalind Chapel on the way right. back when I was taking him back to the, the train um, and when we were in there he was speaking to one of the girls who said that there is a ley line that runs right through Rosalind Chapel from Iona to a place she said you won't know it but it's a tiny little island called Lamb Island in the fourth. And actually for the listeners I would like to say when you see this uh, on YouTube um, Drew had his uh, reindeer ears on, and he's got well, yeah, his. Put back on again. It's falling. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get you. We'll get you fixed and, uh, back up. Yeah, when you're yeah. working with Matt and things. And I think uh, you'll have an even bigger surprise of what I'm actually wearing as well. So you'll see that on well, our YouTube channel, which is youtubecom forward slash Radio West Fife One, and I think you'll get a big, <laughs> big surprise. <laughs> I was surprised myself actually. I don't know. Maybe I would have suited the gold a wee bit better. My earrings are red, and uh, Matt's are actually gold. So. Yes, we're all uh, dressed for the part, aren't we? Yeah, we're it's all, my, it's, all in the Christmas mood. It's Matt's high heels that are worrying me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's not scare. Right. Let's not scare people. Come on. So you're not going to describe at this moment in time uh -huh. to the listeners what you're going to do. You're just going to go into it and describe yeah, yeah, as we move. Yeah, just to do a demonstration. We, we'll we'll try something. I'll explain a little bit about the background. Most but. definitely. Now, can I um, come in? Because uh, obviously, Rick and I have had the pleasure of uh, chatting with you before. But for the benefit of Matt um, and all the listeners indeed, you were actually Trisha Goddard of, uh, well, the talk show host. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. were her interrogator. I was, yes. And can I just say, absolutely terrifying. Oh, that's bad, Drew. You were yes. terrifying. <laughs> so intimidating. It was like, oh, I wouldn't have told him fibs, Matt. No, well, it's, it's all you have, like, you know, no, it's all no, 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 the um, that What you're getting today is good, Drew. <laughs> um, and, and on Trisha, you would get people who would come in and they would say uh, that they they were maybe accused, for example, of having an affair with a mm -hmm. next door neighbour. Yeah. And they would say, oh, no, no, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. And we had a, a proper interrogation suite set up, just a little, little studio, sure. all black, angle poise lamp, tape recorder. Um, we had a couple of cameras in it, no cameramen, I didn't want anybody else in the room to yes. bring this person uh -huh. in. And um, I would do something in which I would get him, for example, to think of his grandmother's name, and then I would tell him what it was, mm -hmm. just by getting him to concentrate and then explain, if I know that, mm -hmm. I certainly know if you're lying to me. Most and it was very scary uh -huh. for him, it was, but that's part of putting the stress on people. So that was bad, Drew. 
Mm-hmm. But as I say, today you've got good truth. <laughs> <laughs> but we say that, but then that was your job. That is exactly what mm-hmm. you had to do because uh, they were putting themselves up for that. Mm-hmm. And if they thought they could put you to the test, uh, oftentimes you could see it on their faces. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, I've been caught out. You know, uh-huh. that's it, that's it. I've I, I, had. Well, it takes about two hours for a polygraph to, to get the truth. That's, that's a, a lie detector. Oh, uh, yeah, probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. I could do it in 20 minutes and get a full confession. A full, right. compa- confession, full confession, 20 minutes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 20 That's minutes. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what are the tell t- telltale signs are you looking for when uh, those who you're interrogating are actually telling you a fib? Well, there are a few, um, and it depends on that individual. So what I do is I will ask them some simple questions. First of all, like the colour of the front door or, or um, their mother's maiden name, which they've uh-huh. got no reason to lie about. So I'm, I'm forming a baseline. Uh-huh. Um, then the questioning becomes a little bit more serious. Uh, and I'm watching for them deviating from that baseline. So I'm, I'm reading their body language, I'm reading their, their, their non-verbal cues, their micro-expressions, and that's what I do. I don't really read people's minds. What I do is I'm reading their, their faces. Face. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, to have 30 years experience in that field. I, I, I was actually, the first time I ever uh, heard that, I, I was awestruck. That's a mm-hmm. lot of I've experience. Been, I've been doing it from, from when I was a kid. You see, I like people yeah. and I like to know how people think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was also fascinated by the paranormal, but I found that I wasn't able to duplicate paranormal phenomena such yeah. as you go away and do a drawing and I'll concentrate on it and I would get it wrong every time. It was really boring for people mm-hmm. um, while I practiced and carried out my own experiments. And then I found that by bringing an element of psychology and science mm-hmm. into it, I could do it exactly the way it would look if uh-huh. I was actually reading somebody's mind. And you also yeah. put that to professional use because you actually worked in uh, military intelligence. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's where uh, the yes. interrogator handle came from. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, 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 It was something that I enjoyed, but it's a very seedy world. And um, But it, it, it teaches you to think in a different way, to watch people, to observe them, mm-hmm. to work out what's really going on in their mind. Mm-hmm. What is that person up to? Why are they acting in that specific way? That seems odd. It doesn't mm-hmm. fit. And so it was learning to read people again. That was it. So it, it honed what I was already doing. Um, as long as I am in control of the situation, as long as I have somebody who concentrates on a specific idea or a specific thought to the exclusion of everything else, I can usually work out what it is. Mm. Excellent. And we can certainly give an example of that just now, if you'd like. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Okay, um, I'll do this with you first, Carly, will I? Yes, with you, Carly. Mm. Um, confirm that everything I say is correct. Remember, I offer £20,000 to anybody who can prove that we've set anything up in advance, that you're a stooge or, or, or something like that. Um, earlier on, uh, you went off into a corner, you made sure there was no cameras, nobody looking over your shoulder. You had one sheet of paper and a pencil. Right. And you did a drawing, which you then folded up and you put in an envelope. Do you have the envelope with you just now? Yes, I do. Where, where is it? I'm sitting on it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. warm. And okay. that way, nobody's getting near it. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> I've got a pad of paper, I've got a pencil. And all I'm going to do is try and work with your mind. Now, this will only work if you can visualise what it was that you drew. So you did a drawing. You did a drawing. Think about that just now. Right. And just see that as clearly as you can. See now clearly. look at me. Just look at me and, and visualise that there's a screen there. Mm-hmm. And project onto that screen whatever it was that you drew. Now, Matt, you're sitting beside me, so you can see what I'm drawing, what yes, I'm getting. So I, I'm going to start drawing this just one... Um, this is the first thing that I'm getting. So I've drawn two lines there, uh-huh. um, sort of upside down V's. I don't know what that is, but just keep seeing that drawing for me, Carly. Certainly. Um, and this is almost mirrored again, so I'm seeing a triangle and a triangle. Kind of looks like a nose in a way. Uh, I don't know. And a smile. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't actually say what you're seeing just now. Okay. Um, if this. Just keep seeing it for me, Carly. If this doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Um, but I know that... Now, oh, this is what's... It's, can you see these squiggles? I'm, I'm drawing some squiggles there. And can you see what that is? Don't say what, it, what you think it is. I'm going to write 
or what? I think this is. And I'm going to colour that little bit in because it's something like that. Interesting. Stuff. Okay, right, so I've done a drawing. Okay. You haven't seen it yet. The only person in here that's seen awesome. me drawing this is, is, is Matt. Um, can you reach into your pocket for me, Carly? I'll okay. get um, Take out that, that <laughs> okay. envelope that you've got, that piece of paper, in your own time. <laughs> and then just open the envelope. Take out the piece of paper that you have. Oh, I'm getting there. And then just unfold it. So what you've drawn is, like, just turn it around so that I can see it. It's a, a cat and it has two triangles for eyes, a squiggly whiskers. Um, this is what I drew. Oh, wow. Jeez. That is absolutely I'm tingling um, all amazing. Over. Well, excuse so, me, that's what I was <laughs> So what I've drawn is a cat with the two triangular ears, the two triangular that is eyes. Awesome. We've got the nose, we've got the mouth, and the odd whiskers. I've only drawn two, you've drawn three on each side, but it's got that strange squiggle. Oh, the there's tail, no and I've written cat above it so you know it actually absolutely. is. Absolutely. Well done, I'd like cat. to yeah. shake your hand. Absolutely. I'm, a, I'm an absolute stuff. I'm stunned. <laughs> that's an odd one, isn't it? And that's not often that I am stunned. How Absolutely. good is that? That is amazing. Oh, I'm just... And the, the, remember, £20,000 to anybody can prove that we set anything up in advance or that was anybody looking over your shoulder or anything Sure, like that, yeah. You know? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, people, obviously, uh, all the bits and bobs that you do do, and you do have your own website anyway. Your website mm -hmm. is... Yes, it's www. Mind play, and that's all one word M I N D P L A Y dot co dot UK. Or just if you go on Google and just put in Drew McAdam, that's Drew D R E W McAdam M C A D A M, yeah. you'll find something. If you've got any questions, mm -hmm. email me from that, happy to answer. But that's cool. it because um, when you look at what's just been done here, um, you do do things and have things on your. Um, Website already. Yep. I mean, people can watch it at work yep. and see everything that's yep, getting done. The, the you don't need stuff. to fabricate any, would there? No, no, Obviously no, today, that's so that just blew me my mind. <laughs> yep. No. Drew McAdams, all-time favourite Christmas movie. Christmas movie. I have three different copies of this at home. I've got one in black and white, which is the original. One in colour and a spare one, just in case I lose any of the others. <laughs> and it's um, a wonderful life. Which oh. is just such a oh, fabulous. I was going to say that's my favourite. And well. I have to sit down if I'm watching that with a big box of Kleenex beside me. Oh bless! Because Clarence the angel gets his wings at the end. He does. Yes, he does. Same. And what's your one? Oh, right now, that's a very tricky one for me. I, I suppose it's one of the. Don't say the sound of music. Oh no, no, G goodness gracious, no! I suppose if you want. For a, for a very good feeling sort of uh, Christmas movie, it would have to be White Christmas with Bing yeah, Crosby. Yeah. Uh, but if I wanted something that had a maybe a bit of a, of a story, like a traditional story, uh, a Muppets Christmas Carol. <gasps> you can't see that. That's my all-time favourite. <laughs> so you I did say there was a bit of a story. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know the funny thing is when uh, you see Michael Caine in that. You know, the majority of that time, there weren't any puppets around him at all. It was done on a, a green, you know, the green Green back? screen, green yeah, screen. green screen, yeah. Um, and I just thought that he was awesome as an actor. He was, thought, he's yeah, brilliant. absolutely. And he still is to this day. You yeah, know. oh, definitely. But that is my favourite. Mm -hmm. uh, so you two, Snap, you've got the same favourite. Mm -hmm. And what then you knit mine for Christmas, you see. Mm. That's what... <laughs> see, that spooky stuff can happen any time. <laughs> <laughs> if you had, Drew, a... Uh, uh, a very, very special wish for Christmas. Would you like to share with us and the listeners, what would it be? I suppose I've got to be careful here because this is the sort of thing you can make an awful fool of yourself. They once asked um, a lot of politicians, big politicians, what they would like for Christmas and they said things like world peace, yeah. the end to starvation, <laughs> apart from poor George Bush who had written a pair of slippers. <laughs> <laughs> well. So with that in mind, um, there is so much to wish for at Christmas and, and it's almost like, for my, for my friends, my wish would be for those people that are close to me and for my friends, um, I would wish them the best year of their life. Mm -hmm. still to come and to unfold for them. Mm -hmm. So That'll people that mean something us. to me. Yeah. Yeah. That answers the question. <laughs> many, many thanks. Now, 
Ricky, you have always got this one there. This is one of your favourite questions, isn't it? Yeah. Right, go for it. <laughs> your favourite toy for Christmas as a boy, what was it? Oh, wow. Favourite toy at Christmas. There were two, really. One which was, I, it was the very first time I got a tape recorder. And it was a small thing about the size of a, <laughs> a toaster. Oh, and I about as much use as a tape recorder. Mm. And I think the tape, it was a reel-to-reel -reel and it lasted oh, yeah. about um, 10 minutes. Right. But it meant I could record my mates and hear their voices or I could put a, 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 a song or something on it mm -hmm. and I could just listen to it again and get to me. That, that, was, that was witchcraft. <laughs> you can actually <laughs> play that. Another thing was, I think in America they call it silly putty. So it's, like, it's like a little blob of putty. Um, and you can roll it into a ball and it'll bounce, or you can put it on newsprint and when you peel it off it's got the, the writing All back right. to front. Right. Mm -hmm. and it was it was incredible. It was probably highly toxic and I don't know what happened to it. I probably ate it. Um, <laughs> but but to me, it was, it, it, again, it was it was like something magical. This strange mm -hmm. little yeah. blob of stuff that, that could be almost anything you wanted. Was that man be. manufactured in Britain or was it? I have no American idea. Thing? It might have been an American heard of thing because yeah, I do have an American auntie. I've never heard of that. We had slime. I remember we had slime as kids. I think there was, yeah, I remember. It was that. Like, oh, it, it almost like Play Doh. That's, that was almost the feel it had to be. It was very Yeah, you could bounce it, you could pull it out, you could pull it into huge sheets. So it went almost as thin as paper and just right. kept going. Really? And then you could lay it down on oh. anything that was tight, peel it off. Hours of fun. <laughs> Definitely. What about yourself? Uh, my favourite toy? <sighs> well, I think it would have to be... I'm going to have to go for a, a stereotypical boy's answer. Right. Um, it was back in 1998. It was the first. It was my first Christmas in my new house. I was seven years old and I've wanted this for absolute ages. was a Sony PlayStation. A Sony PlayStation? Well, there you go. Carly's favourite, favourite toy of all time for Christmas was my space hopper. Oh, oh, oh that's, boy, that's going back. Yeah. Oh, boy, did I bounce for miles. I thought they were a waste of space. I think you can still even get them now. I think they're coming back on the train now. I think on you the train. can still get them anyway. Yes, train. Yeah, you can still oh, ride them. They're coming back on the train. <laughs> Why use both modes of transport? Anyway, um, next question. What about what you would like to see in your stocking this year? Or stockings. Now, and before the listeners take this the wrong way, the reason I say stockings is uh, I do actually know somebody that doesn't hang one up but insists on hanging two, mm -hmm. which is absolute greed. <laughs> so I did, I used the plural there because, right. you know, it might be your stocking or stockings. I know this sounds strange, but I mean, people do say that, that I'm the most difficult person in the world to buy for because my interests are mainly in my work, my mentalism and so on. And and that's, that's really about it. Um, so I would have to say, what would I want to find in my stocking? Goldie Horn, I think. <laughs> Goldie Horn. Goldie Horn and a neck whisk. <laughs> <laughs> now that gives you something to think about, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Drew, I did not expect. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. And what about yourself, Matt? What would you like to see in your stocking or stockings? <sighs> he wants Goldie Horn and a neck whisk too now. <laughs> yeah, he did, he's here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're setting You're... me off here. You're setting me off. <laughs> uh, right, These gold earrings are misting up here. Right, <laughs> right I'm going to keep this clean now. Um, well, apart from lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of chocolate, and I emphasise on lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. <laughs> so just a little bit of chocolate then? Oh, just a tad. Just, oh, right. just a wee just drop. A, yeah, we'll meet sure um, you. Probably tickets to go and see either the British Grand Prix or the Monaco Grand Prix next year, because I'm a massive Formula One fan. Absolutely. Mm. Well, there you go. Well, we just hope that Santa's listening to your request. I hope, and hope yours so. also, <laughs> equally. I mean, I wouldn't hold my breath, Drew, for years. No, no, no. What about your stockings? Uh, well, as Matt mentioned earlier about a PlayStation 3 or a uh, Xbox 360 Connect, that would do me. Now, you see, I don't actually have the same slant on this as obviously you guys, because we always had to have our Satsuma and our piece of silver you were sometimes got an apple or whatever and as long as i've got them at the bottom of my stocking i don't care what's in them <laughs> really absolutely well it's better than a lump of coal i suppose well i mean well, i don't think my mum would have given me coal but anything's anything. a bonus absolutely mm -hmm. well 
We are going to do, uh, obviously, your demonstrations uh, now, Drew. We're really looking forward to that. So, um, obviously, that will be ready for YouTube. Okay, of course. Mm -hmm. So the details for that will be now. We now, first of all, uh, in order to get to our YouTube channel, the easiest way to get there is to go through our website, which is www.radiowest5.org.uk, and uh, just click on the link to uh, Radio West Fife on YouTube, and you'll find uh, myself, Ricky, Carly, Andrew McAdam. Uh, on YouTube and you can see us in tinsel, uh, bobbles, uh, Santa hats, uh, reindeer, ears, ears uh, was and, your, it's all and your high heels. And my high <laughs> heels. <laughs> yes. So on behalf of Radio S5, Matt, Ricky and I, many thanks for your time, skill, fun and as always your honesty. And we hope you have an absolutely fantastic Christmas. Thank you very much. And yep, thank, thank you. you.